ったんですよ、うん、あの<笑>はいはい So today I'm going to tell about uh, Rablock. Rablock is a company which is being invested by uh, Gravity Corporation. It is a private blockchain company which helps small businesses to scale their operations with the help of blockchain. So to start about uh, knowing about the technical background of Rablock, first we have to know about some basic technical concepts of blockchain. So let's get started about that. So uh, what is blockchain? Uh, blockchain is nothing just a style of storing data and making, uh, making decisions in which no one is in charge and everyone is in charge. Uh, this is centralized and immutable. I'll uh, uh, explain more about the keywords here in the definition. So uh, centralized means if I am part of this blockchain, then I have uh, uh, then I am not in charge of the blockchain but I am an integral part of the blockchain and without my permission anything cannot happen and the other one is uh, smart contracts oh, smart contracts is nothing but a, just a piece of code which is used by uh, which is used by the computer to authenticate or to do some task so I'll, uh, this is just a vague definition. I'll go into detail in the, uh, in the slides after this. So uh, the main concepts of uh, blockchain is uh, the first one is uh, consensus and the second one is proof of work. So uh, these both concepts are interdependent. So if there is proof of work, there will be consensus. And if there is consensus, there will be proof of work. They can't be uh, present one alone. So first I will try to explain what proof of work is. So yeah, so first I would like to tell, <laughs> uh, first I would like to tell uh, how a blockchain works. So if we try to understand how, to, how a blockchain works, blockchain is just a style of storing data in which we have to have a hash value. And that hash value can be generated with the help of a hash function. Uh, a hash function is uh, a similar if, if we talk about a little bit mathematics it is a similarity function in which we give something an input and we get an output in the hash function we use for uh, blockchain the input can be data in the form of anything like it can be text it can be images it can be anything and the output would be uh, a string or a, a number or something which can be represented in bits so that is what a hash function is now let's consider that uh, uh, that we don't uh, we are trying to build a blockchain so first of all uh, the first block in a blockchain is known as genesis block uh, and uh, the first block can have uh, uh, empty data because it's just the starting of the blockchain so i just put data as nothing and then I try to generate a hash. So I just, as I told, the new hash for this would be the uh, the similarity function, the hash function, and we give input data plus a previous hash, and uh, let's assume it to be one for this block function. So uh, why blockchains? Uh, why uh, why blockchains are in a chain manner? Because every block is uh, uh, connected to the previous one with the help of a hash so that's why uh, if i'm trying to create a block i have to uh, i have to connect it to a previous block so as it is the first block in the blockchain so i am just assuming that the previous block can is zero previous hash is zero but it can be you can put it anything 0 100 200 according to your convenience for me it i just put it as zero so now i created the genesis block with empty data with an empty string uh, created a new hash value uh, and inputted data and my previous hash value to generate the new hash. Now I have the new hash to be one, and now I want to make a uh, and, and now I want to insert 
another block into my blockchain so the data for that blockchain will be would be my name vishrut and now i'm trying to calculate the new hash now as i told you that always uh, we we should have a connection with the previous hash that's how the chaining will be done so the new hash would be uh, will pass the input to the function as data vishrut and the previous hash value which is 1 because it is connected to the genesis block and genesis blocks value was 1 so now uh, we create a new hash i assume it to be 2 it's not uh, the hash function is not so straightforward it's uh, very complicated but for simplicity i'm just assuming it to be one digit values so now uh, again i want to add one more uh, now i want to add one more block and let's uh, say the data for that block would be unusan and i and the new hash would be as you could guess as it has to be connected to the previous hash and previous hash is 2 so the data uh, data to the hash function would would be data uh, unosan plus 2 means previous hash which is 2 and i assume it to be 3 as we can say see whenever we put some input to the hash function it will always generate one hash value and uh, uh, if uh, i change the data if i change uno san uh, uno san spelling to uh, kimoto san then the hash value would change and as the hash value would change if we have another block in front of uno san this block will be dead because it would not be having the same hash as uno san so that's why uh, blockchain uh, we use blockchain so that the data cannot be changed so okay so now i would like to tell you about proof of work uh, the proof of work is i told you about hash functions and now hash functions is uh, some uh, now hash functions are very complicated functions because uh, uh, the hash function says that if we give a specific input it would always give a specific output and which should be same on every computer so if uh, 2 plus 2 on my like in arithmetic 2 plus 2 on my computer is 4 so 2 plus 2 is 4 on a uh, computer in the uh, on every computer in the world so that's how that's the basic functionality of a hash function we give an input and the output would be same for specific input so if we uh, and now uh, uh, these hash functions help us to have integrity of blocks so that the blocks are not repeated but uh, if we want to secure the blockchain because uh, ca uh, the calculation part of block uh, of hashes is not very difficult uh, is not very difficult for a computer the higher the computational power of the computer is the easier it gets to compute hash values uh, but that's where the proof of work comes in proof of work helps us to con uh, make a system in which uh, like for example i'll talk about the bitcoin system in bitcoin system we have a proof of work which states that you uh, when you are creating a hash value for uh, for a block you have to get another uh, another extra value which is called nonce this one which is called nonce nonce value can be from minus infinity to infinity any value and you have to uh, and our, uh, the computer uh, the computer's task is to find a nonce value for which there are a specific number of zeros before the hash value so this task takes around 10 minutes to find some that kind of a hash value and that's why uh, uh, because it took so much time to calculate the hash value and that's how our proof of work begins uh, first we have to uh, like if I want to make uh, I have, if I want to add a block to the blockchain and then first I have to find the hash value uh, the hash value generation took around 10 minutes uh, now the uh, hash value is generated and I and the block is added now if I want to uh, change the uh, uh, now if I want to change the uh, data of that block uh, so I change the data and I try to calculate because as the data is changed the hash value will change so if uh, as the hash value will be changed we have to go through the hash function again and it will again take 10 minutes so uh, the blockchain the proof of work of blockchain says you if you are trying to change uh, data into in any block then you have then you have to do it before any new block is mined 
so if we want to change data of an of a previous block we have to change data of all the success uh, of the, of all the blocks after that block before the next block is mined which is computationally impossible for a computer to do because it already takes 10 minutes to uh, to mine one block and if you are trying to change a block then you are already computing that block and the blocks after that so it's it is highly uh, in in computational uh, in computational to do this process that's why they say uh, that's why it's the proof of work because it is impossible to change data of a blockchain that's why it says proof of work now if uh, uh, now as i said if there is proof of work there is consensus consensus means uh, uh, consensus means uh, there are some parties which says like uh, okay this uh, i agree and if everyone agrees they add it to the block so if uh, uh, as we know in blockchains there are miners so what miners do is miners have a good hardware which helps to uh, uh, run the hash function or the on their computer and then uh, on from their computer they give us a hash value now the beauty of a hash function is it's very difficult to generate a hash value but it is very easy to check if the hash value is correct or not so if uh, i am a miner and i create a hash value and i send it into the blockchain network yeah. all the other nodes all the other computers pa uh, participating in the blockchain will get my hash value and they'll just check if the hash value is correct or not and it is a very fast process not like uh, generating the hash verifying a hash is very fast and when if each of our uh, uh, if each of our nodes says yes uh the hash is right the block gets mined into the blockchain mm -hmm. so that's why uh if we have proof of work we have consensus and if we have consensus we go to we got to have proof of work so this is some uh basic concepts to understand what uh rablock how rablock works uh so uh i would uh why why we need blockchain uh we need blockchain because it is uh, very, it increases transparency i would like to give an example of a bank so if you want to uh, do a transaction with a bank so now you are trusting the bank that if you uh, send 100 dollars then the bank will uh, uh, will credit 100 dollars to the person you sent it to so you have to trust the bank because uh, now banks are uh, trustworthy i believe uh, i also think that banks are trustworthy but there is still the problem that you have to trust uh with blockchain you don't have to trust anybody it is uh, uh it uh, like i said there is no one in charge but everyone in charge you can't do anything alone but uh, without you they can't uh, they can't do anything by themselves so that's why it's great uh, it's highly transparent whatever you are doing everyone knows as it is uh, uh, as uh, it uh, as the blockchain is centralized Uh, it enhances security now to enhance security it means that as i told you the proof of work and uh, the consensus algorithm helps to make blockchain uh, immutable which means uh, uh, which uh, which means it uh, the data once entered into the blockchain cannot be changed so that increases security another thing is improved traceability now improved traceability means we know the status of our uh, of a uh, what do we call of our transactions like uh, how much is it like is it being mined is it uh, is it in the queue to be mined or something like that so we we know how much time it will take to for the transaction and uh, we don't have to trust the bank or anything that if they say they are trying uh, they are processing it they we don't have to trust them it uh, we all we have everything on our computer screens without uh, without any central uh, central organization okay so i explain this one so types of blockchain there are two types of blockchain broadly one is public blockchain and one is private blockchain now uh, uh, first uh, if you know about blockchains i would like to give examples of public blockchain public blockchain would be uh, bitcoin ethereum but private blockchains would be hyperledger and another private blockchain is rablock uh, there are many others but these are some famous ones so uh, what happens in a public blockchain uh, in a public blockchain uh, anyone is open 
to read write or uh, read write or mine blocks you don't have to have certain permissions to uh, modify the blockchain if you want to do a transaction you can because it is public and it is open to everyone and in public blockchains the best part is the peer to peer network if uh, peer to peer network means if i am part of the blockchain then the full copy of blockchain is on my computer too so if uh, uh, so that's why we don't need any servers to host the public blockchain and that's the best part of public blockchain because we don't need any servers so uh, and in private blockchains uh, we got to have some kind of uh, authorization service that if uh, vishrut is authorized only then he can uh, participate into the blockchain and if he's not then he can't uh, they both have their uh, pros and cons but uh, uh, but if i try to explain in a broad way uh, like many people ca- uh, many people gets confused in blockchains and cryptocurrencies uh, they both are different things but in a public blockchain uh, if there is a public blockchain there will be a cryptocurrency but in a private blockchain there is no crypto uh, there can be cryptocurrency but mostly they don't use cryptocurrencies uh, basically we need cryptocurrencies to run the public uh, to run the blockchain so in private blockchains we pay the server in the form of cash so that the blockchain keeps running so we don't need any uh, cryptocurrencies but in a public blockchain uh, we are having no servers and people are using their own computers to run the public blockchain on a peer to peer network so they should be uh, they have to get paid for the computation power they are spending to run the blockchain and that's why the uh, that's why the uh, the game of cryptocurrency comes into play so uh, i would like uh, the uh, an, uh, the to classify more about public and private there are public and closed blockchains so public and closed blockchains are uh, something like in which voting can be done like voting uh, if i am uh if i am a citizen of japan only japanese citizens should be able to vote in the elections uh not uh, everyone in the whole world so that's why it's public for the for whole japanese uh, japanese audience but it's not uh, but it's still closed for everyone else in the world now public and open means like uh, it's open for everyone any country any anything so it's something like ethereum and bitcoin now private and closed private and closed blockchain would be if i am running a company and i want to uh, all my uh, and i want to switch all my private data from the normal relational database to a blockchain then it is a private and closed blockchain because only i am able to see that data but it is in the form of blockchain private and open would be something like a uh, confidential data of uh, uh, of uh, Uh, citizens of uh, citizens of a uh, country which uh, the citizens can access but cannot change so it is private because the main authority in that blockchain would be the government but still it is open for everyone uh, to look at so these are some broad idea of the blockchains now i would like to explain more about a public blockchain so a uh, basic example of a buyer and a seller so first of all a buyer uh, wants to send money to the seller so he starts to create a block in the blockchain and after the blockchain as i told you there will be a hashing function If, without the hashing function there is no blockchain so that uh, the my data about the transaction my name my uh, unique identification my amount everything will be gone into the crypto hashing function this after this uh, crypto hashing function uh, to this crypto hashing function now in what happens in a crypto hashing uh, function uh, the blockchain distributes my uh, distributes my data for transaction to many many nodes of the blockchain and these nodes are known as miners and uh, so these miners run the computation on their ne- on their computer or on their hardware and whichever is the first one to give the correct value of hash gets rewarded because if uh, he is using his electricity to run the hardware to mine the block 
then he should be paid for what he's uh, for what he has done so that's why we in a public blockchain we need cryptocurrency so that's what happens when whenever I, if i am the miner and i was the first one to create the hash uh, then i will just create uh, i will just push the hash to the next uh, next blocks connected to my block and then if uh, and then uh, as uh, as i told you the beauty of hash function it is very uh, it is very quick to verify the block but it takes time to generate so i did the generation part which took time and energy which i got paid for in the form of cryptocurrency and then it goes to every other block in the blockchain to verify in and if all the block says yes it is correct then it gets added to the blockchain and as it got added to the blockchain as i told you it says distributed databases uh, distributed databases means peer to peer network like on every participant of the blockchain they have a copy of database on their uh, computer and if they and uh, uh, the main idea of blockchain is all all over the world the copy of blockchain should be same uh, should be same on all computers if you have a different copy then your uh, then the due to the consensus algorithm your blockchain will be uh, disregarded so everyone should have a distributed uh, database which is having the same amount of entries and that's why it ca uh, it is uh, highly secure because if there are 1 million users of blockchain if one tries to make a false transaction still the other uh, 1 million minus 1 users will say that he's trying to fool you and the blockchain will uh, cancel that transaction so in this kind of a system we don't need anyone to uh, uh, we don't need a central identity to check or to be in power of saying that who is wrong or who is right we all are interdependent we uh, we are in charge of ourselves if we uh, and it means uh, as i told you we are in charge of this means trustless peering which me uh, we are not trusting anyone we are just trusting the system which means that the we are just trusting the proof of work algorithm which is uh, uh, which is highly uh, which is highly secure as we uh, because we we have blockchain from a long time now and still nobody is able to has uh, nobody is able to do anything to it so proof of algor algorithm is highly trustable and that's how the money from buyer goes to the seller okay so a public blockchain uh, some few points it is open read open to read and write like anyone can try to do a transaction or anyone can try to read a transaction it is open to everyone uh, as i told you ledger is uh, distributed it is not centralized it is decentralized decentralized means uh, the copy of the database or ledger will be available on uh, will be available to every node participating in the blockchain that's why it is highly highly uh, that's why it is high, highly secure and immutable immutable means as with the help of proof of work and consensus no data uh, no block can be changed once mined uh, and uh, the other thing is as i told you if we have 1 million uh, if we have 1 million users in a blockchain and if 51% like majority of the users are uh, are of a same identity like if uh, if hypothetically i make uh, if there are 100 blockchain nodes in the world and i and i am trying to uh, and uh, for 100 blockchain nodes and i am uh, i paid money to all the miners and i bought 51 of them uh, visual in the world uh, about the uh, bitcoin hmm. there's uh, over the 2000 uh, uh, nodes in the world no no uh, it's more than million nodes million yes oh great <laughs> So if uh, I'm just get, getting taking an example of hundred, mm. so if I own fifty one of the nodes, then I can own the consensus. No, it's very well, it's more difficult to uh, uh, hack the over the fifty one yes. percent. Uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, that's why it, that's that's the beauty because more the number of nodes, more difficult it gets. Oh. 
so you can't obtain 51% of the nodes of a blockchain network and that's why it is highly secure if you are able to get 51% nodes of the blockchain then you can own the blockchain and you can uh, uh, then the consensus stops because consensus means everybody is saying yes or no if majority says yes the blockchain says yeah. yes okay thank you go ahead Okay, now I would like to tell something about private blockchain. Uh, private blockchain is uh, the works on the same concept of uh, public blockchain, but it does not involve a cryptocurrency because uh, in the main work of cryptocurrency in a public blockchain, uh, in a public blockchain, uh, charging. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think uh, already charged it. No, no, it's, it's yeah, 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 fine. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, in it's very similar to public blockchain, but with uh, very few, uh, with with but with some changes. Like uh, we don't need a cryptocurrency here. We if we want, we can have, but it's not needed. It's totally up to the user if he wants it or not. So crypto uh, in this uh, transaction, the main reason we wanted a cryptocurrency in uh, in public blockchain was to uh, in uh, to give the miner some kind of incentive when he mines a block because he's using his computational power to run the blockchain. But here in a private blockchain, it is hosted on cloud like AWS, Google Cloud, or somewhere else. So uh, the host of the blockchain will be giving uh, will be uh, will be paying the cloud service to do all the transactions that's why we uh, public blo uh, private blockchains can run without cryptocurrencies because we are already paying the private block uh, we are already playing the uh, paying the cloud service to do the transactions that's why no cryptocurrency needed but uh, on the other hand in public blockchain uh, all the transactions are free only payment is done to uh, only payment done is to is for the computation done on the on the hardware of a person and that's what uh, that's what is the charge you incur in uh, blockchains that is uh, and that is the incentive a miners get mi a miner get so in a private blockchain the same thing happens a buyer tries to create a block by a transaction it goes to crypto hashing in crypto now in a private blockchain as in pre, in uh, uh, public blockchain it goes to all the miners but in a private blockchain there are no miners there are just small servers which are already bought by the host of the blockchain and these uh, and these uh, uh, and these transactions goes to all those instances of servers and after going to all these instances of servers the first server to uh, to the transaction adds the uh, adds the uh, block into the blockchain and that's how the seller gets it uh, gets their money so all the transactions are are uh, all the computation is done on the cloud which is being paid by by the host of the blockchain so that's how private blockchain works and as you can see there is now in uh, public blockchain there was trustless peering we did not need to trust anyone but in private blockchains there is a uh, trusted peering in which means only authorized personnel can only create block transactions like if i am i have i am being given the authority to make blocks only then i can make the block not everyone can make blocks so that's uh, some idea of private blockchain mm -hmm. Now, private blockchain, it is uh, more used in enterprise versions. Like if uh, I am having a huge company which is having a lot of data and but that data is of only my benefit that if uh, someone else gets it, then it will be loss of the company. And but I also need a blockchain. So that's where private blockchains come into play. You are only the main person behind uh, using the blockchain, but you also get the uh, but you also get the features of immutability and centralized services in uh, in your own company. So that's where private blockchains come into play. Uh, it is uh, it is having very fast transactions in comparison to the public blockchains because as we know in public blockchains, first the proof of work takes time, 
and then you also have to do consensus with all the nodes in the blockchain it is ha in the private blockchain we only have very limited number of uh, consens consensus nodes because you are paying for them on the server so if as they are very less so that's why the transactions are much much faster like if blockchain take 10 minutes my uh, it might be possible that in a private blockchain it takes 10 milliseconds so it is highly uh, highly efficient than public blockchains a uh, better scalability obviously as it is fast and uh, and to add nodes you just have to add a server from the cloud company uh, you just uh, the more you pay the more scalable your blockchain can be so that's why it's easily scalable then uh, uh, as i told you consensus more efficient as it is having less nodes so as the nodes are less the consensus is highly efficient you don't have to check for every node only the consensus node which are on the cloud checks the blockchain and compiling support as an enterprise if they are block uh, is their is if they are using a private blockchain the more uh, uh, the more functionalities they want they can ha uh, it is highly customizable like if they want more functionalities they can just add it they don't have to uh, use the general protocols which are used in public blockchains they can create their own protocols so that's why uh, people use private blockchains now raplock is also a private blockchain solution company which is cheap and efficient for small businesses like if we consider to uh, hyperledger the charges uh, of raplock blockchain technology is uh, Twenty thousand dollars, and for Hyperledger, it is two hundred thousand dollars. So it cuts the cost ten times. But we are not saying that Rablock is much more uh, is better than uh, Hyperledger because Hyperledger is having very high functionalities for big companies. But for small companies, they don't need those kind of functionalities. They just need small functionalities, which is efficient for small or mid-sized scale companies. So that's why Rablock is focusing to. Use blockchain technology to make uh, to scale operations of small and mid-sized business of businesses. The uh, Rablock is running two product, uh, two pro two uh, services right now. The first one is of uh, health records, of uh, uh, health records of a uh, hospital in the form of blockchain, so that it's highly accessible to uh, it's highly accessible to the doctors and it's uh, immutable and to uh, to show that this is possible now I would like to show uh, actually sorry for the bad drawing but uh, I would like to show the exact architecture of Rablock system so the exact architecture of Rablock system is uh, the these little uh, ma uh, little persons are users these squ sorry these squares are uh, instances of server and this uh, uh, cylinder is a database so uh, as i told you as the basic concept of blockchain is the number of nodes do the consensus so we have three nodes and in rablock also the the basic rablock uh, demo is having three nodes so these are three nodes which we have in the on the cloud and the cloud uh, rablock uses is aws so uh, the first each in every node we have a NoSQL database which is MongoDB and as I told you each node should have a copy of the database so as I have written ledger ledger means database so each node of the three will have the ledger uh, ledger copy and to and the blockchain only works if all the three copies are sim uh, are identical if because if any of these copy would be unidentical the blockchain stops and it says to first correct and then only it will run so if uh, if i want to make a transaction it first goes to uh, uh, this between the uh, these arrow it will go to the cluster function uh, sorry the crypto function and that crypto function will send the copy of transaction to my node 1 to my node 2 and to my node 3 and there will be a competition between these nodes uh, whoever will give the transaction first and if uh, uh, for instance node 3 computes the hash value first then it pushes that hash value to the other nodes like node 1 and 2 
and as I told you, beauty of hash function, it uh, verifies instantly. So node one will say yes, it uh, the uh, the hash value is correct. Node two will say yes, the hash value is correct. And as more than fifty percent of the nodes have said the hash value is correct, this transaction will be added to the blockchain, and the receiver will get its money. So that's the main technical back uh, technical workflow of uh, Rap Block blockchain. Uh, it is very diff uh, different from uh, Hyperledger because Hyperledger is having many 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 functionalities over this but uh, Rablock is simple and very efficient for small and mid-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, yeah that would be it for me. Thank you. A any questions? Uh, Rablock nodes is uh, uh, basically must be that over the three, three yes nodes. minimum uh, three because, uh, minimum three because uh, major decision yeah who 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 is uh, using this this blockchain uh, Rablock blockchain yeah, yeah. Rablock has many clients but the few clients they have the one is uh, di uh, the one is smart lock in which uh, it is a IOT based locking uh, uh, IOT based locks which record all the data in the form of Rablog blockchain and the other one is uh, a health company which is recording all the data of diabe diabetic patients in the form of Rablog blockchain how big are they? how big data are volume ah data volume ah uh, because ah uh, they have they don't mention how big are they uh, because I just had a workshop about Rablog and the other things I just from the internet okay thank you very much okay thank you thank you, thank you.